healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Shannon, as you already know, uh, and thank you so much for tuning in to the One Touch Ministry broadcast right here on the Daily Gospel Network, and we are so excited that you are able to tune in with us on today, and today we have a special word for you today because we'll be continuing part two of It's Time to Repair the Breach, but before we go into that message, let's just start off with a quick word of prayer. <coughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, for starting us on our way, for putting food on our tables and clothes on our backs, and we say that we're grateful, God. Grateful for everything that you're doing, everything you have done, and everything that you're going to do for us, oh God. Father God, we continue to pray right now, Lord, that you touch the hearts of your people, oh God. Touch hearts and change lives right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, we pray, Lord, for supernatural signs, miracles, and wonders to come about right now in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Father God, we knew 
we know that if it had not been for you who was on our side, where would we be, O oh God? And Father God, we know that it wouldn't be here with these, your people, watching us right now on the Daily Gospel Network. And I just thank you, Lord, for doing exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. So today, my brothers and sisters, a few weeks ago, I had spoke on Isaiah 58, verse 12, that reads and they shall be of thee uh, shall rebuild and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach the restorers of paths to dwell in and I just took my thought on the repairer of the breach and I just wanted to say that it really is time to repair the breach and then a few weeks ago we talked about how um, uh, we talked about a breach what is a breach a breach is something that uh, if you was to punch the wall you would have breached the wall you have broken the wall um, if you if you take uh, a plank or if you take a pen you break it in half you've breached it and you've broken it in half and also if you have a contract there's such thing as called a breach of contract <clears throat> and a breach of contract is a is a, uh, a breach of a, of a contract legal cause of action and a type of civil wrong in which the um, binding agreement or bargain for exchange is not honored by one or more of the parties to the contract by non-performance or interference with the other party's performance. So what happened is that uh, many years ago with Adam and Eve, they breached the contract. They breached the contract of the fellowship between uh, heaven and humanity, between um, God and in man uh, because God he actually uh, came to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day and so then there was fellowship that was koinonia that's where God uh, when he said let us make man in our image and that's what he was talking about he was talking about that you know hey he God wanted someone who he could fellowship with that he could talk with and so that's the reason why that um, he created us. And so then we talked about salvation. Salvation. That's one of the things that um, when this breach of contract happened, that there was a breach in the fellowship. And we have to become the repairers of the breach for uh, salvation so people can know and understand that Jesus Christ really is Lord of all he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords so on today I just wanted to talk to you from my heart because I want to talk to you about uh, another breach of contract that happened and one of those things was the uh, was family yeah family uh, when Adam and Eve fell the family fell mm -mm -mm. and and one of the things that uh, that we in the body of Christ have to understand that family is everything a lot of people uh, want um, church and ministry to top everything but it should be God first then the family and then everything else trinkle um, under there you know and if you're married then of course you know God is still the head uh, and your wife or your spouse is which would, would be considered your family and then everything else trinkles um, 
after that. And so we have to understand that there are broken families. There's people that are living in this life with broken families and they need to be restored. They need to be restored. You may be living in a broken family. And throughout the years, as you may have probably grown up, you've probably heard or people saying, um, you know, I've had so many uncles that I've seen come and gone because you come to find out that those were not really uncles. Those were people that came into whatever woman's life uh, at that time, whether that is your mother or your grandmother, your aunt, you know, or whomever. Um, those people really were not your uncles. There were people who um, that woman was sleeping around with, and you know there there were there were things that happened that broke up family ties. You may have been the person who um, you did not grow up with your mother or with your father in your life, and so then one of the things that uh, what 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 a father does for a child is bring identity, and one of the reasons why that we suffer right now in this world and in the body of Christ is because we don't have enough men in the body of Christ to be able to help bring identity to help our young men and young women to understand who they are, so they're broken. A breach has happened. And it's time for us to repair that breach. Maybe you're the person who, um, maybe your parents were in your life. Maybe your mother and your father was there. But you were molested when you were younger because of someone. Or just something happened in your life. And so one of the two things have happened. Either you have strayed away from the church. You have strayed away from God. Or... Maybe you've turned to a life that's not of God. Maybe you've turned to, you know, a life of homosexuality. Hey, uh, I'm here to tell you is that God actually loves you. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves you. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. I'm going to say, hey, I love you because... Everyone needs love. Everyone needs acceptance. And in order for you to turn your life around, and I believe that God for you to turn your life around, is that you have to know that He loves you right where you are. And you can begin to learn how to change and turn your life around to better yourself. You know, the Bible says this. The Bible says that uh, without a vision, my people perish. And it literally means, it literally translates, without a prophetic unction, or without a prophetic voice, people cast off restraints and run wild. And so this is one of the reasons why I believe is that our families do not have vision in their life they don't have vision in their life so they they never see themselves as the politician they never see themselves as the doctor or the lawyer or the business owner and it's so sad because when I remember when I was a youth pastor I used to um, speak to a lot of young people to ask them hey what are your dreams what are your goals what are your desires and a lot of them really didn't know they didn't have any dreams. They didn't have any goals. They didn't have any passion. They had no desire. And it's because the family is so broken. They never seen anybody actually doing anything in their life worth accomplishing. Except for selling drugs, having kids, uh, 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 being abused. That's all they saw. And then and they never had a a father figure in their life 
to where it can help them bring that identity of saying, son, that uh, you need to be able to do something with your life. They never had a mother figure because mother figures are, are mothers are actually natural, are naturally um, uh, 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 caring. They're naturally uh, want to be able to care. And you have a lot of mothers who are, they don't care for what their children are doing in their life. I'm so glad that the Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Some of you don't know what it feels like to be cared for. Some of you really don't know. Um, so that's the reason why you, you struggle with the goodness of God because you, as a matter of fact, I work with a young man. I work with, with a young man who he um, just started to ask me questions. And he started to make jokes about heaven and hell and everything else. And he began to quote scriptures to me. And I said, Mark, it seems like you know a lot about the Bible. Uh, are you a believer? And he began to tell me, he said, I am a believer. He said, now, he said, I don't believe that the Bible is the unadulterated, unfallible word of God. He said they have some great things in there. He said the reason why I, you know, don't go to church and don't and don't don't read the Bible uh, as as I should is for the simple fact is that I was always taught that God was a God um, that was ready to um, strike the hammer down and send me to hell. I went to hell for everything. I went to hell because I didn't tie my shoe right. I went to hell because um, you know I didn't do my homework. I went to hell for for everything. And he said, and I, he said, I just couldn't believe. I just couldn't serve a God who um, who basically was going to send me to hell. I believed in heaven and hell. And I didn't want to go to hell. And so. He said that um, now apparently it wasn't a, a Bible that he read, but it was a book that someone wrote that allowed him to feel that, wow, God actually loves me. So this is my encouragement to you who says, hey, God has given me uh, something to touch hearts, to touch nations, to to be able to um, bring people into understanding of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hey, maybe there's somebody that would never read the Bible again, and maybe they never read the Bible again because they don't understand. They don't understand the Bible, but they will understand the words that you will say. You are helping to repair the breach in your Bible. And some of the things he began to say that he was saying about this book, so apparently it was a Christian book, it it, it would lead down the paths of um, you know, some, some Bible truth, it'll get some scriptures and, and everything else. And he said, and this book actually helped me to understand that God actually loves me. That book helped I don't I have to get the book again from him. But that book actually helped to repair the breach of one human being who now says that I accept God into my life and I'm on my way to heaven. Heaven and humanity. We have to bring, we have to bridge that gap. We have to bring that together. We have to be restorers of places to dwell in. And so that's what I want to encourage you today when it comes down to your family, when it comes down to your loved ones, you know, to make sure that you restore that, 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 uh, that link that's missing. That link that could be missing between your mother and your father. That link that could be missing between you and your brother. That link that could be missing between you and your sister. That link that could be missing between your aunts and your uncles and your cousins. 
Hey, I'm not saying that you have to talk to them and speak to them all the time and, and everything else because there may have been some things that has happened that, you know, hey, that may cause to say that, you know, hey, I, I don't want to be able to be around you totally all the time. However, you know, that you have to be able to bridge the gap. Just, you know, even to be able to say, hey, bro, I'm sorry. Hey, sis, I'm sorry. Hey, cuz, I'm sorry. Somebody have to be there to be able to help bridge that gap. To be, to be able to uh, repair that breach. We are the generation that shall rise up. And we shall be called the repairers of the breach. So many things that's going on. And who knows what's happening with this, you know, coronavirus. What's happening with this Delta virus and so many other viruses that's coming out. And our government... Hopefully I don't get canceled for saying this, but our government is trying to separate us. He's trying; the government's trying to separate the people. This is what I personally believe. You guys may not believe that, but I'm just speaking my truth. The government is trying to separate us. Family is so important right now. They're trying to tell everybody to keep their distance, to stay away from one another. I'll say this. I will say. Take the proper precautions. I will say that. Take your proper precautions so that uh, so that you can be around your family, so you can be around your friends, so that you can be around people. We as people, as the human race, ha was not built to be alone. The Bible even says man should not, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. It is time, I'm telling you guys, it is time for us to repair this breach of family. This is the reason why you see so many people gathering at concerts. As soon as you hear about a concert going on, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. Because for the simple fact is that we are meant to fellowship with one another. It's part of our cause. It's part of our being. It's part of who we are. Is that we have to be able to fellowship with one another. So when you separate yourself from certain people or certain things for certain reasons, a lot of times that's not good. And you have to be able to have fellowship with one another. Man, oh man. And I really do pray that God actually give you guys... Give you guys a heart and a passion. I mean, really, just I mean, really, I'm just speaking from my heart today. I didn't have a whole bunch of scriptures, and I didn't have a whole bunch of things to be able to say. But the one thing that I want to drive on today, because I want to continue this repairing of the breach, because there's so many things that need to be repaired. Our uh, so, well, first of all, we need to repair salvation. We have to understand that Jesus Christ is the Lord. We have to follow Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who is this King of glory? The Bible says the Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. So we have to repair the breach of family, of, of, of fellowship. And again, we have to repair the breach of family. You know, we also need to repair the breach of marriage. We have to know how to be able to uh, love one another, understand one another. We have to know and understand how to communicate. They always say communication is key. But since I've been married, I've learned that, yes, communication is key, but how you communicate is also key. Because you have to know how to say certain things. Certain things you just, you know, this is just where I am. This is just who I am. And da 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 da. Yeah, that may be true. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that you have to know how to communicate with your spouse. 
Because if you don't know how to communicate with your spouse, then you're breaching the contract of your family. Then you're breaching the contract of salvation. Because when you became married, you put yourself into a covenant. You know the reason why you wear a ring on your finger? And the reason why the ring is round or circular? It's for the simple fact that your covenant is never, is never ending. There is no alpha. There is no omega. There is no beginning. There is no end. It's just a complete circle. It's going to always continue to be. I'm telling you, this right here, I'm hoping that it's blessing you. I'm hoping that it's blessing your life. You know what else needs to be restored? We talk, we're going to talk about, we talk about salvation. We talk about fellowship. We talk about f family. Uh, we're going to talk about marriage. We're also going to talk about restoring our children. The, these, <laughs> these kids, I'm telling you. We grew up so much different than them. And I look at my daughter and I look at my son and I look at every single thing that, that that's happening in the world. I mean, like, just going outside just to play, for instance, it's just so totally different now. You know, um, going down the street, riding a bike, it's just so much totally different now. A lot of these kids don't know how to have fun, and then, and then they they have so much access to to drugs and to, um, you know, violence and guns and everything else. We're going to talk about that because we are going to be the repairers of the breach. We are going to be the people that's going to uh, restore the paths to dwell in. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this broadcast, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that we are going to be the generation. We're going to be the people to be able to repair the breach. We're going to patch the holes of so many things that need to be restored. We thank you, Lord, that we will be able to show the paths to dwell in we thank you Lord we thank you Lord that uh, everything is going to be restored back to us that the locust and the canker worm have stolen that has taken from us oh God and just like you restored Job uh, and gave him double for his trouble Father God I thank you Lord that you're going to give us double for our trouble oh God for Father God for, for, for just the simple fact that we are going to go forward in you and restore every single path that you are allowing us to be able to restore. We thank you, Lord. We know that it's not going to be uh, uh, easy, but we thank you, Lord, that it will be worth it. So, Father God, bless these your people, oh God, on the Daily Gospel Network, oh God. Father God, I pray right now that they will be able to be the repairers of the breach and that, Father God, that right now in the name of Jesus, you restore them 100%. Give back to them, oh God, every single thing that they lost over the past few years in Jesus. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.